This is a high school algebra one lesson about compound inequalities. Two inequalities with the same variable that are written together and are true together and are put on the same graph. Okay, let's look at here. Compound inequalities can be it's two separate inequalities joined by and or or. And is going to be called an intersection. Both statements are true. Or is going to be called a union, and only one statement is true at a time. Okay. Both of these are true at the same time. Okay, so let's look first at and. All right, let's start with the problem here. And let's say that with the two inequalities that we have are x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 1. Okay, let's graph these individually and see what we get. We're just going to do a plain little line graph. It's only one variable. And for this purpose, you can draw it all pretty and numbered all nice, but you really don't have to. Just show relatively where everything is. So we can say, here, I'll put zero here in the middle so that they match up. And then we'll have, I'm going to need it to be um, greater than negative two. Okay, they'll be negative one, they'll be negative two. Okay, x is greater than negative 2. Okay, well, negative 2 greater than, remember we have an open circle. If it were greater than or equal to, it would be closed. And it's got to be bigger than it. Okay, now these, so it's all of those values along in there. Okay, let's remind ourselves that if, uh, you're always going to want to have the variable isolated, but if it's on the left, you have that cutesy little thing that the arrow, the greater than sign, matches the arrow in the direction you need to go, and they both go the same. For me, that's kind of a silly way to correct that I've done it right, okay? Now, that doesn't work. If this were negative 2, remember, you could read them backwards. Negative 2 is less than 5 is the same statement, but you can't do the little, tr little trick with the arrows and the greater than or, or the less than sign. So if you want to use that little trick, that little corrective, and that one really helps me. If it helps you, use it. If not, then don't worry about it. You'll want to have the variable uh, on the left. X is greater than negative 2, which is what I have here. Okay, so that is X, a graph of X is greater than negative 2. Here I'm going to graph X is less than 1. I'll put 0 in the same place just so you can line up and see what I'm doing. So it'll be 0 and it'll be 1. You know, and I can put the others as well. Okay, but zero and one. Now I need x is less than or equal to one. So I'm marking out that one is where I'm talking about. And it can be equal to, remember the open circle means only less than, and a closed or bubbled in circle means less than or equal to. That, see, it leaves a hole here because the two, negative two itself is not actually included and here it doesn't now just a reminder on this now you're gonna might maybe be tempted to say oh well if it's less than negative two then i'll start at negative one and bubble that in no 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 because that doesn't allow for all the values between negative one and negative two like negative one and a half negative one and a third negative 1.7 all those sorts of things Okay, so it actually goes around the place where it changes, which is negative 2. This is x is greater than negative 2, and it has to be at the 2, negative 2, not the negative 1. Okay, so here is um, x is less than or equal to negative 1. Now I'm going to draw in another one here to put them together to show you kind of what we're doing. And I'll line it up just because that makes it, make, makes it easier to see. Okay. So we have at the same time, at the very same time, it's going to be greater than the negative 2. That'll be the same. That'll be an open circle. It's going to be less than the positive 1. 
or equal to the positive 1, so it's a closed in circle. So what will go between it then is to show us what counts. Okay. So we want the values between. It's a between statement. We want it between negative 2 and positive 1. That's a between statement. It's an AND statement. Notice that we could, if we wanted to, put these two statements and write them together. Because look at it right there. It's between negative 2 and positive 1. So we could, if we wanted to, write it all together. Now to be able to do that, the symbols would need to go the same direction. I'll show you why in a minute. But they got to go the same direction. I'm going to make them less than. Either one would work. You can make them both less than or less than or equal to, or both greater than or greater than or equal to. The little arrow part needs to point the same direction or you can't do this. So I'm going to change this one. And instead of saying x is greater than negative 2, I'm going to say negative 2 is less than x. Okay, that is the same statement. It's just written backwards. But now I'll use this one, this one where the both have a less than or less than or equal symbol, so I can put it together in one string. So I can say all together, negative 2 is less than x is less or than or equal to 1. Okay? So this then would be a statement putting it all together, nice and handy. And this is how it's often written. So this is the way the AND statements, they're a between statement. And you can tell x is between negative 2 and 1. Oh, look here. The values I want, the orange ones, are between negative 2 and positive 1. Okay? So it just writes out that way. looks nice and easy. You can write it this way, or you can write it as two separate ones, and you're going to have to write the word AND. Okay? So this one is AND, or the intersection. So now let's talk about the other one. The OR statements. Again, it's two separate inequalities joined by OR, and only one is going to be true at a time. Okay, so for these two, I'll have these two statements. X is greater than or equal to zero, or X is less than negative one. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put it on the same graph. You'll see why it's, you can do it. Um, normally, you wouldn't do these out separately. I'm just kind of showing you how it goes, how it is composed. This one, you can see it automatically. Okay, so we're going to need a 0, and we're going to need a negative 1. So I won't put any more than that. Okay, so the first statement, x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, now both of these are written, written with the isolated variable at the left, so we can trust the way the arrow goes to use it. So I'll start with this one. Uh, x is greater than or equal to 0. I'll make that pink. x is greater than or equal to 0. So it's 0, and it can be the same as 0. It can be equal. So I'll color it in because it can be equal. And then it needs to be greater. Greater is over here. Coincidentally, the arrow looks the same, which is really handy. I like that to be able to check it. If you don't care, you can do it which either way. Okay, then I'll write x is less than negative 1 with blue. Okay, less than, not or equal to, so it'll be an open circle, which means it comes all the way up to negative 1, which really isn't possible. Just the next number, because there isn't a next number, there's an infinite number there. But anyway, you use an open circle to say anything but that. So here we go. And it's the ones that are less than, and yes again, the handy-dandy little arrows help me and they go the proper direction. Now let's look what happens here. There's a hole. Basically, the number that you need, x, can be any number except one that's between negative 1 and 0 or negative 1 itself. Any other number will work when you get it. Okay, let's try to write this one together. Okay, well, what it would look like, and, and this is kind of hard to do because it's like wrong, Make no mistake about it. So I'm going to try to write it together. I'm going to say 
negative 1 is greater than x and x is greater than 0. Does that work? Huh. So it would have to be true this way. When you do a statement like this, everything has to be true. For example, up here, negative 2 is less than x and x is less than negative 1. So it has to also be true that negative 2 is less than negative 1. And it is. That works for and statements. So let's look here. Right here, negative 1 is greater than x is greater than or equal to 0. What we have here is that negative 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Guess what? Ain't no way. Wrong. Don't do that. Okay? You cannot write them together. The only thing that you can do is write them separately as it's written here and write the word or. That's how it works. Sorry about that. Okay. So, let's try some of them. Okay, let's start here with this one. Okay, so write this problem down in your cipher. We're going to work it. Okay, remember you're supposed to be taking notes in your cipher, in your composition book. This is going to be an AND statement. Notice it's written together. It, it could be written negative uh, 6 is less than uh, x plus 5, and then x plus 5 is less than or equal to 11, but I put them together. It's an AND statement. You're allowed to do that. So, let's see. Oh, my goodness. The, my variable is not isolated. It's not all by itself there between the two symbols. To be able to do this, it's got to be isolated. Just like solving an equation to so or solving an inequality, signing a con uh, solving a compound in inequality, the variable must be isolated. Okay, well, now if this was a Plano inequality or a Plano equation, and you had x plus 5 and you wanted x to be isolated, what would you do? Oh, yeah, subtract 5. Now, if this were a Plano equation or inequality, you'd need to do it to both sides, but oh my goodness, we got three sides, three locations. Okay, well, no big deal. Subtract 5 in every location. Okay, so then you'll get 1, 6 minus 5 is 1, is less than x because 5 minus 5 is 0, is less than or equal to 6. Okay? So it's the same rules as in equations and inequalities. You just expand your vision. Make your knowledge broader. Okay, then to graph this, what's it going to look like? Well, we're going to need a 1 and we're going to need a, a 6. So I'm going to put the 0 kind of over here. Put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can number them if you want. Don't have to for me. Some people might want you to. Okay, now let's put the two statements on here. Think of it first as 1 is less than x. Okay, I'm going to make that one pink. 1 is less than x, or x is greater than 1 would be the way I would want to write it. x is greater than 1, because I like that little handy thing with the arrow things on the end. Okay, so x is greater than 1. It can't be equal to it. It's going to go that away. Okay. Then our other one, that's x is greater than 1. Our other one, would, okay, this one's already written with x on the left, so I like that. x is less than or equal to 6. Okay, going to draw a circle at 6. And, oh, it can be equal, so that means I will bubble in the circle. And it needs to be less than 6. Oh, look, my arrows match up. Blue arrow and the left. Okay, cool. So what I need is between. This is an and statement. It is a between statement. So everything between is what I need. Okay, this pink would keep on going forever. X is greater than 1 would keep on going forever to the right and x is less than or equal to 6 would keep on going forever to the left. 
but I don't want all of this. I don't want this. I don't want this. I only want this. Okay, so that is the solution. Here's the solution. Here is the solution graphed. Okay. Now you try one on your own. Please go ahead and please pause and work it. Then I'll show you what, it's, what, it, what happens. Pause it and work it. Okay, here's how it should be. Okay. So we've done the same thing here. Isolate y, which is the variable. Make yourself to, uh, this is one compound, inequality. It's negative 4 is less than or equal to y, and y is less than um, 1. And notice that the symbols are going the same direction, so you're good. If you got the symbols going the different direction, it's not going to work. You did something wrong. This is what it should look like. Okay. Try another one. Okay. Pause the camp. Pause the playback while you do this. Then I'll show you. Okay, here's the solution. Okay, now notice this one got a little tricky. Now I hope I hope you didn't get caught on this, but if you did, you won't next time. We've got divide. We have variable to isolate it. We have to divide by negative four. And we remember from basic inequalities that uh, when you divide or multiply by a negative number. Your variable jumps to negative land or to positive land. It goes to the opposite side of the uh, number line. And on the opposite side, either from negative positive or negative ne to positive, positive to negative or negative to positive, they're going to be in the opposite order. That's how our number line is set up. The negatives go back from zero. The positives go forward from zero. So when you multiply by a negative, it's going to leapfrog or Professor Frog leap to the back, to the other side where they're in the other order. Since they're in the other order, you have to change both of the symbols. Okay? And that's what it turns out looking like. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, here, copy this one down. Work it with me. Notice this is an OR statement. So I'm going to solve each one individually because I can't put them together. So I'll solve them individually. I, uh, let's see, I need to isolate the variable. So to do that, I'll start by this one subtracting. Remember to write all your steps so you don't make a, a dumb mistake. Then I have 2R to isolate. I'll divide by 2 and I get R is less than 2. Okay, over here, same deal. I'm isolating my variable. Now, there's at least two ways to do this. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it, and I'll tell you which one I like and why I like better. Okay, so one way to do it is to say, I don't like messing with negatives, and I don't like flip-flopping the symbols, so what I would personally do here first is add R to the other to both sides to move it. Is that the way you normally do something? No. But if I do that, if I, you know, I, I'm, if I just subtract 9, then I'm going to have a negative. Anyway, I like doing it this way. That'll give me 9 is less than or equal to 2 plus R. Then I subtract 2. That's one way to do it. Okay. And when you finish this, you can either write it in this direction, which is perfectly good, or if you're like me and you like your arrows to all go the same, but so to be usable, it'll be like this. That's one way to do it. Okay. The other way to do it is a little more conventional. That's an R. What am I doing? Negative R plus 9 is less than or equal to 2. Okay. I'd subtract 9. That's usually the thing you'd do first. Then get negative 4 is less than or equal to negative 7. Then I've got to multiply both sides by negative 1. And that'll give me R, oops, 
is greater than or equal to 7. Okay, you get the same thing either way. This is personal preference, folks. It's just like what you like to do. It looks like it's the same number of steps, about. So whichever way you like. If you're not a negative phobe like me, you can just do it this way. It doesn't matter. It's your choice. Whatever you like better, that's the way you do it. Okay, let's graph it. Okay, the two I'm graphing are uh, 2 and 7. So I'll put my 0 over here to the left. And 7. Okay, so I'll make R is less than 2, pink. And it's less than, so that's an open circle. And it's got to be less than. All of these numbers are less than 2, like 0 is less than 2, 1 is... Okay, so this is the way that's less than. And oh, look, the arrows match up. I like it when it does that. Then I'll do this one, either one of them. Doesn't matter, they're the same. Blue. And so this has got to be R is greater than or equal to 7. Greater than or equal to, so it needs to be bubbled in. And I need the ones that are greater. 8 is greater than 7, and 8 would be right there. Then 9, yep, that's greater than 7. Also, handily, the arrows match up. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to look like. And if you would, please go ahead. Oh, here. I'm going to put it out. Put it out here. I want you to work this one. Pause your playback and work it. Okay, here's how it should look. So make sure it looks pretty much like that. And when you do, you're done. And here endeth the lesson.